it is your attempt to get the perfect knowledge, which means it's your attempt to win life. You cannot win life if you do not understand the game you are playing. Amen? You simply can't. You're just setting yourself up for failure. And, and you're not, you haven't been sent here to fail. You've been sent here to win. But there's a way to win. Many years away, a long time ago, before um, when Christ came 2,000 years ago, before we call it Christianity or anything, it was called the way. The gospel he was preaching was simply called the way. Um, Christian took hold of it and it became Christian. But it's just the way. It is the way to operate with God and the way to operate in your life. When we say we're Christian, this is what you're saying. Or if not, you're being religious. Religion is like a set of people come together for a different reason or whatsoever. But when you say you're Christian, you're saying, I know the way or I follow the way to God and the way of God wants me to operate in the world. It's called the way. You understand? He was persecuted for this new way he was teaching, the way. You give me hope. You give me hope. You give me hope. Because you remind me. Because you remind me. There is a way. There is a way. To operate. To operate. With my creator. With my creator. And how to operate. And how to operate. Effectively. Effectively. Upon this earth. Upon this earth. You give me hope. You give me hope. Jesus sent you in my life. Jesus sent you in my life. To remind me. To remind me. That there is a way. That there is a way. You need to understand this. And you need to stop forgetting this. You remind and give people the possibility that there is a way for them to live in harmony with the Creator and to be effective in this earth. Mm -hmm. We want God to fix it, and God is going, I've already given you the Spirit, as Pastor Joseph said, to fix it. You need to get familiar with the way. Mm -hmm. Say, so there's a way. 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 You, need, you, need, you need to know this. Mm -hmm. When people, what our lives are supposed to be examples of, when we are walking in the way, people are supposed to be able to go, we went through that same situation. You came out different. It's like Sister Jessica said. Because of her leaning into the Lord, she's going through something, but it's not having impact. Why? The way. She's leaning in on faith. Faith acts as like a shield. In fact, the scripture in particular tells us yes. that. Listen, it's a defense. Yes, it is a defense. He it may is a not defense. change the situation. Right but he then. give you the defense to navigate. We always go to God, change the situation. You no, know, you don't need the situation changed. We said of our game, the rain to fall on this day. And if you can follow his. So what I want to give you is an umbrella to walk through it. He will give you the love that you need to get through Once it. Once forever, it's necessary, yes. Mm -hmm. There's a way. Jesus came to teach us the way. We are in the series called Surround Blessing, State of Righteousness. I could say it different. Surround Blessing, the way. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. State of Righteousness is to habitually be in the state or the way that God ordained or set before us. Every time you come out of the way, there'll be trouble. It's like driving on the highway or on the road. When you're on the right lane, things work. Mm -hmm. Every time you're going on common traffic, you're going to have issues. Mm -hmm. People are going to be blowing at you. Doing obscene things that you know you don't want to see because you are breaking the way. Every time you break away, your spirit will malfunction. Every time you break the way, your soul will malfunction. Every time you break the way, your body will malfunction. There's a way for the body, way for the soul, way for the spirit. Every time you break the way, your relationship will malfunction, whether it's with God, with man, or whosoever. There is a way. So there is a way. There is a way. And it's been given unto us. And it's been given, given unto us. us. That's what's called the church. The church are nothing more than an entity that have received the way, supposed to be walking, exercising, operating in the way, and sharing the way. That's what the church is. It's not a building. The way comes in to worship the one who gives them the way. You'll never worship God until you fully understand the way properly. You'll do it because I tell you, or somebody told you, or your mommy. Or your culture, but you don't understand what you're doing. God needs us to understand the way. There are two things I want to share with you. The process in and through the way. As I said, as we talk about Sarang Blessed State of Righteousness, last week we started a component of it called the importance of preparation. Amen. Say, so I need to prepare for the way. I need to prepare for the way. Why was Jesus sent? What was Jesus sent to do? Prepare the way. Prepare the way. Yes. Why was John the Baptist sent? To prepare the way. Amen. There is always a preparation mm -hmm. to operate a specific way. 
or to do something a specific way. If there's no preparation, the way does not get up to be affected. Mm -hmm. There is always a preparation, and I want to show you two components. That preparation through the way or for the way is what we call process event. I am going through the process to become familiar with what? The way. We seem to mix this up all the time. We call crisis process event. Is, is crisis and process event the same? They're radically different. And I'll show them to you. I'll show you an absolutely clear distinction between the two. Because you need to know which one you're in. One is I almost like you need to holler for your mommy like a child when they're trapped. I want my mommy! There's no process. The child wanted to creep, that's a process event. Child wanted to walk, that's a process event. They're freaking out, there's no process. They're desperate. This is crisis. We need to understand the difference between the two. There must be a clear distinction. You must be able to discern between the two. And I'm hoping through the Spirit of the Lord I can help you to see this today so you know which one you should be doing and which one you should not be doing. Where the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. So when God tells Jesus, prepare the way, he goes, I want to bring my children back in right relationship with me, so I can give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Because we were, we, were, we were in a bad relationship. See, he's your father, he made you to do a job, but because you guys got into a, a, a fight, you understand, you disobeyed him, and it's not you, your forefather, but your forefather was carrying the whole race, the whole species, it fell on us. So all of a sudden, we are cut off from all knowledge, all wisdom, and all understanding, but our tasks still stay what? The same. Imagine I give you a major company, or like the Sky Dome to build, and I was going to get you all the resources, and all the blueprints, and then all the things you need to build it, but just before we... We, are, we undergo the project, we have to follow. But you still have the project to what? Complete. You still have human life to live. You still have people to deal with, things to deal with, difficult situations, circumstances. But you now lack wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. That, in a sense, tell you the state of our world. We don't like it that we go, man, things are so bad. Things are so bad because we are so far removed from wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We are winging it. We are trying hard. In fact, the more we try, the worse it becomes. You ever see somebody, let's say they don't understand what they're doing and they come to help you, and the more they help you, they make it thing worse. They go, please stop. Just please yes. stop. Don't, don't help. Yes. You help me by not doing anything. <laughs> when you don't do anything, it is awesome. You're helping me perfectly then. As soon as you start to do, you stop doing what you intended to do, which was to help me. That's us. So he went on to say, amen. He holds victory in store for the upright, those who are set upright. <coughs> he is a shield to those who walk is blameless. You can't walk blameless if you don't know how, what the way is. We were consistently blamed because we are consistently trespassing and violating what? The way. Just don't know. We're not bad. We're just very, very ignorant. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of the faithful. Mm. Wisdom protects you that are faithful to the way. The way to be a human or the way to be a son, a child, a daughter of God. The knowledge and the understanding and the wisdom of God protects you along this way. Mm. I'll illustrate this process. Outside of this, you will live in a consistent, habitual state of crisis. I don't think that is a way. That is not a way. That is you're drowned in. Mm -hmm. And you are freaking out. You're not on the way yet. You're begging for somebody to get you to the way. You're going, somebody throw me a lifeboat. Throw me a float. Mm -hmm. When the float comes, you have now entered a way to survive. And when I want to say, so he protects the way of the faithful ones. Then, only after you got the wisdom, the understanding, and the knowledge, and you're faithful to the way, then you will understand what is right. Yes. Amen? And just and fair. So until you get the way, you can't understand what is what? Right, just, or fair. Mm -hmm. By what means? What you're going to use? Amen, I want to say. 
Every good path, you will begin to understand the paths you should take. How do I navigate in this situation and this situation and this circumstance and that? Because the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding will reveal the paths to you. Say their paths. Their paths. Already in this world. Already for us world. to walk. For, for us, us to walk. take. For us to take. That allows us, that allows to, us be to be effective. And their paths. That we should not take. That we should not take. You can't go in oncoming traffic. Mm. There is a path. But you will live, if you're lucky, to tell the tales of the destructive events that take place or occur as a result of your decision. It went on to say, For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Is your wisdom getting to your spirit, man? Then your soul starts to experience the irrepressible joy. It's so pleasant. But if ignorance entered the heart, or overshadowed the heart, or into the soul, I promise you, your soul will not have no fun on this earth. You will hurt yourself. You will hurt people. You will torment yourself. You will torment other people. You have no choice. Because wisdom has not what? Enter thy heart. Your soul does not experience the pleasantry of life. It experiences the pain and the torment of life. Does this make you a bad person? You're not bad. You're just malfunctioning. You're not operating up to the standard of the capability <coughs> that you were created and in the way you were designed to create. Mm -hmm. Do you understand me? Yeah. I, want, I, I, I want you to um, watch a process. How a, tr and a transformation. And even for the church, the ecclesia, the, the ecclesia of God must go through a process of familiarization mm -hmm. in, this, in, this, in this process. Twisted values. Our ignorance of God's will and His ways has twisted our world. We devalue what God values and elevate what is insignificant to Him. He sees the tremendous ability we have, and we look at the earth houses that contain that treasure. See 2 Corinthians 4 7. He created us to show forth His power, but we are more interested in success by the world's standards. Mm. He affirms our ability to tap into his wisdom, but we make decisions based on the information we receive from our physical senses and education. Our poverty of knowledge is revealed by our inability to fulfill God's potential on our own. We live aimlessly without purpose, flitting from one thing to another and never accomplishing anything. Such life is a waste of time. Without a sense of purpose, we are like stillborn babies. Might as well you didn't, you weren't born. You're here just taking up kind of space. Your potential will be wasted if you do not allow God to cleanse your sight and redirect your values. Then you can escape this purposeless existence. This occurs as you become aware of the world's standards and compare them carefully with God's. You may be surprised by what you find. That what she just read about, that's called a crisis. That's not a process event. You are in a, this is the most of the world. The world is in a state of crisis. They are desperate, they're out of control. They're just, they're just moving, they're, they're just, there's no sense of direction. There's no, they, they, they're no harness they're not going nowhere. They're not showing why they're here. They were given an assignment to tend and guard the earth. None of it, none of it. And we kind of tell God, look, I'm doing something. No, you're not doing anything. You're dying. The only thing you're dying is called you're spinning. It's, or you're reeling. It's like when a boxer gets hit with a punch that hurt him and he starts. It's called he's reeling. He's ready to go. He or she is ready to go. There's no stability. There's no focus. There's no knowledge. There's no wisdom. There's no understanding. It's called reeling. And one of the first things, notice what we just got to do. We got to give them some smelling salt. I can't get you into a process till I get you. Just, just, just still. Just stop. Just stop. Don't, don't move. Let's get your head clear. I'm not talking even to do the work. But just so you know, you're, you're not reeling anyway. You're not seeing double six <coughs> coming. Mm -hmm. Then once that process is there, then you need to start what she's going to read next. It's called process event. Going through the process to get to the place where you can be effective in your life. So when God called you, first thing you go, be still. Be still. You are in a crisis. And typically it's when we find God. We typically find God when the crisis gets what? To its height. Most people live in a consistent 
perpetual state of crisis. But then necessary, it's at a high heightened state. They typically look for God or they commit suicide or turn to drugs or alcohol when the crisis get what? Too high. Mm -hmm. Too hard to manage. You know what I'm saying? Please continue. Cultivate and feed your potential. Page one more. Whatever you eat eventually eats you. The old woman smiled as she entered the small hot room. A blaze of color met her eyes. African violets of many shades of pink, purple, white, red, and blue, and variegated mixtures of these colors filled the room. The room had not always looked like this. When she and her husband had first built this house many years ago, this had been their children's playroom. Then, toys had filled the shelves. After the last of their children had left home, the woman had become very depressed, missing the children and having very little to do. That's when a friend had given her clippings from her African violets and had <coughs> persuaded her to turn the playroom into a greenhouse. The idea had been a good one, giving her renewed interest in life. Over the years, she had spent many hours here. At first, only one of the many shelves had contained plants. Now the original shelves were completely filled and others had been added. She still remembered her joy when her violets bloomed for the very first time. Many hours had preceded that triumph for she had never been known for having a green thumb. In fact, some of her friends had tried to discourage her new adventure because in the past, plants had been more likely to wither than flourish while in her care. Still, she had forged ahead. In time, she had come to understand that her plants had failed because she had not given them sufficient care. Indeed, they had died from neglect. When the first plants not only lived but flourished under her touch, she gained the confidence to add other colors by getting more clippings from her friend. She also began reading books and magazine articles about the care of African violets and talking with others who loved plants. One day, while reading a horticultural magazine, she discovered an article on creating hybrids. That was the day she became hooked. Since then, she had spent part of every day in this room, watering her plants, checking for insect pests, rooting new cuttings, fertilizing the plants that were about to bloom, <coughs> picking off old blossoms, and rotating the plants so each one received sufficient light. Even the day her husband had died, she had wandered in here to find solace among her friends, as she had come to think of her plants. In the evening, she often read gardening and horticultural magazines here, having moved her favorite chair from the living room when her husband was no longer there to spend the long hours with her. After nearly 40 years of hard work, an extensive reading, the riotous color that surrounded her revealed the success of her efforts. Now, her skill in cultivating and breeding African violets was known throughout the community, and over the years, she had found great joy in teaching others the art of cultivating plants. Every year, her conservatory was considered to be the highlight of the garden tour. Plant collectors throughout the town, in gardens and rooms, were testimony to her skill. The successful fulfillment of your potential is similar to the task of growing prize-winning flowers. Both require careful attention and diligent effort to produce winning results. There are three distinctions in this process. First, she had no interest. This is why many of us can't begin cleaning up our lives sometimes. The first thing she had to get, when God called you, what's the first thing he's trying to get you on? Interested in fixing or correcting or getting your life what? On track. Mm -hmm. First principle, you have to have a desire. You have to have some interest in your life or the, or the thing or the, or, the, or the project you're working on. Because without this interest or desire, you're not going to be able to accomplish the second distinction. The first thing, she was there, her children gone, she's depressed, etc., do not know what to do with herself. Our friend sent her a clip in. You understand? And it, it, it captured our interest in these African violets. But, as our friends could testify, and she know, any plants in her care typically what? Died. 
Jack plans before they always die. So, but because she was interested, she started to what? Read and study. You understand? So first she gets interested. Then once she gets the desire of these African violets, these, these flowers, she got, you see, she decides to get familiar. She is now about to in, engage or embark in a process to become what? Familiar. The first compo component is become an interest. This gets you to the door. To enter the process, you have to cross the Red Sea. It's called the law of familiarization. The law of becoming acquainted with what you want to do. She starts to read. She starts to fellowship with her what? Friends, other gardeners. Very soon she had amassed a tremendous amount of knowledge about what? Flowers. Even hybrids. She learned different ways how to mix them and join them and modify it. She gained tremendous knowledge as she go through. In fact, it's a 40 years of knowledge, of reading and studying. Until our children's playroom was completely filled with flowers, an array, a righteous array of colors. She went through a process to get there. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. She had to get interested to come to the moment of what? The process. Mm -hmm. Christ is typically supposed to project you, hopefully, to want to change. Mm -hmm. And us changing will change others. I hear people say, that, yes, I'm coming there. Well, your insight is beautiful. Mm -hmm. You see? I hear people calling the crisis process event. That is not a process event. You're dying. Mm. It is meant to lead you to the process event. Amen. I think I heard, I can't remember who said this, and I heard it many times. People have suffered. Oh, God just wants me to suffer for a while. Oh, God, God is the one. God is just, um, I, I don't know what, how to justify this madness. No, he don't. If not, Jesus died in vain. Mm -hmm. the, the suffering we go through is in what? Becoming what? Familiar. Mm. It's the familiarized what? Zation. Developing whether it's your patience, your love, your part. There are several characteristics that have to be developed. But it has to be in the process, not in the crisis. You cannot be developing a crisis. You're not learning nothing, you're freaking out. Not, nothing, your senses is not functioning properly. When I was a kid, I nearly drowned. You can't, I could swim, but I can't think clear. I am literally freaking out. It takes someone with a clear mind to what? Rescue you. Yes, yes. So, she was in a crisis. She was depressed. Her children had left. There was nothing for she to do with herself. Don't know what to do. God needed to get her rejuvenated. So he sent her an invitation card with a clipping. He said, you're not done yet, woman. Mm -hmm. You have made children. You have married. You have raised children. But I still say you have a lot of substance in you. Woman, you call 65 done, you are about to run your greatest race yet. So you have to send her an invitation to the game called Living. It captures her interest. You know what captures us. Every one of us is captured differently. He send the thing that speaks to her. And then she decides to engage into the process event. She start to read, and she start to fellowship, and she start to learn. And she start to apply what she's reading, and what she's learning, and what she's hearing. And very soon, she became an expert gardener. An expert flower take care of. She was so good, she started to teach it to others. She was so good, everybody in the area, and every year, they come to her house. This lady, she learned at that point, the reason why our flowers used to die, she didn't know how. Because before, she used to get plants, and they always what? Die. That's why our friends go, no, no, no. You shouldn't raise plants. You are brutal. You are awful. She learned why they died. They died because she lacked what? Knowledge. Was she a bad person? Why did the first plants die? She just lacked what? Understanding. Yes, and you're yes. She didn't have the desire to learn. Yeah. Well, that's something. Oh, everybody grow plants. I'll grow plants too. Mm -hmm. You gotta get familiar with how to do it. Mm -hmm. 
You have to get, it is why a lot of people in the kingdom are ineffective. Or they enter the kingdom. They're like, Jesus is my Lord and personal Savior. Ask them what they know about the way. So as a result, they can't operate the way in their spirit, in their soul, in their body, in their life, in their family, in their community. Their life is in a consistent, perpetual state of crisis. And this is why the world does not admire the church. The world lives consistently in a state of crisis. The church lives consistently in a state of crisis. Why would you turn to them? How is your crisis any better than my crisis? We both have to deal with the same thing. You suffer the same effect that I do. I would never come to you. The church is supposed to be handling the crisis, transforming the crisis into process event, transforming the process event into an array of beauty. Then the world of man, I am certain that crisis fall upon you, that fall upon me, but you navigate. I got to learn how. You got there is a way. And we justify, the part I don't like, we justify the crisis as the way. Oh, this is how God intended me to live. It is a weak, it is an evil. This is why the crisis, when I come, the first people I am dealing with is the church. It's not the world, not the crisis. The ones that know. The way, yes. We're going to talk, why is in the way <coughs> operating in your spirit, in your soul, in your body? Why it's not in your life? And you know why? You don't have enough interest. This is the reason. As a result, you don't go through the process. The process of familiarization, you don't do. Post-baptism, you don't. Reading your Bible, fellowship, finding out others that understand the way. Hey, I've got to learn more about the... I need to learn about African violence. I need to learn how to prune them. I how to clean them. I how to change the pot. She learned many things. She, she even understand why she wasn't succeeding what? Before. She became so awesome. Every year there was a gardening show. And she was the center of her. The woman that knew nothing about flower <laughs> became the most <coughs> awesome. She became the teacher that they all want come to. Do you know you, the church, is supposed to be the people that your family come to, your friends come to, your community come to? You know why they come to you? You know the guy is so beautiful? Your awesome hair. Sleek fizzy. You know, awesome <laughs> kerchief passage I'm wearing here? Must be. No, it is because of the way. It is because you're supposed to know the way. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. Please understand there is a preparation <coughs> to get to perfection. There must be a preparation, a transition. That preparation process is what we call the process event. From interest to perfection. There are many things you're going to have to learn. There's much time and energy you have to put into accomplishing. You have to talk. You have to fellowship. Please don't mix up that. You are not applying. You're not learning. You're not reading. You're not studying. You're not fellowshipping. And your life in a crisis. And go, I am going through a process event. Let me tell you the process event you're going through. Dying. That's the only process event you're going through. And that is not God process event. Mm -hmm. That is the ignorance process event. You are dying. You are in a crisis. <coughs> we need to stop operating in crisis and move to process event. Do you understand me? The woman was dying. She was depressed. Don't want to wake up. Why? But she found an interest. God is forever trying to give you your calling card. Hello? It's not an age thing. It is not a female thing or a male thing or a culture thing or an ethnicity thing. It is a necessity the world needs. The world vitally needs the way. Family vitally needs the way. The church vitally needs the way. Your community, your culture, your friends, we all need the way. We're waiting for the pastors. We're mm -hmm. waiting for the teachers. It begins with those who the calling card has been given to. Mm -hmm. And you got to 
Stay you, you understand? Know it. The pastor is nothing more than the information she was studying, the books and the fellows. That's what the pastor do. He gets you the ways. But you have to apply the way that you're victorious in your spirit and victorious in your soul and victorious. You understand? She still passed through many things. Her husband died, many things. But well, she was effective. How our life was, the, 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 the fulfillment she had. I call that living. I don't call crisis living. Oh, I'm living. I go, that's what you call it? I call it as you're dying, kicking and screaming. You, it's one thing you're not even living. There's another thing you wouldn't even die quietly. Everybody got to know you're dying. Oh, I'm dying! You don't want to live, though. Amen? And I just wanted you to, sh to share that process with you for you to understand so you don't waste your time in life. There has to be a preparation. She didn't become an expert. She didn't get the praise. Amen? That she rightfully deserved 40 years. Magically. She had to go through a process. A process of familiarization. A process to become acquainted with what she's dealing with. She learned how to make it work and why it doesn't work. Hallelujah. We keep applying things that doesn't work because we don't know the knowledge of what works. God said in Proverbs, from my mouth, I will give you the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. So there's an importance in preparation. There's an importance in preparation. Look at somebody again in their eyes this trip and said, I thank you. I thank you. Because, because you know the importance, you know the importance of being ready, of, being of getting, ready, prepared, of getting prepared, prepared to apply the way. Apply in, the Jesus way. Name. in Jesus' name. Thank name. you, Jesus. You see, these are the reasons I praise God. I praise God because he sent Jesus to set it to right. But he also gave me a spirit. Why do we have the Holy Spirit? Why is it with us? It is our books. Our architecture magazine and everything, the Holy Spirit is that for us. The Bible says it has to lead you into all what? Truth. 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 Amen. It gets you ready. So you can get into your greenhouse. Amen? Mm -hmm. It gets you up to speed. Amen. But you have to have a serious interest to want to know the paths of effectiveness. The ways of effectiveness. Look at somebody. Only if you're, if you're truly serious about this. Don't do it because I tell you. If not, you're just deceiving yourself. If you are serious about this, so I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. Like, let me tell you first before you, you, you follow me. What I'm going to tell you to say, I want you to, to declare it. You're getting ready to done with crisis. You're, you're about to consistently live in the way. Hallelujah. If you want to consistently live in the way instead of a consistently be in a state of crisis, you understand? then you need to learn the way. It is nice to have me, it's nice to have Pastor Chow, it's nice to have, but you have to start doing this for yourself. Because if not, the people around you doesn't benefit. The world doesn't get any better. Mahatma Gandhi said, you want the change? Be the change. Amen. Mother Teresa was a, was a teenager when she started. It's not an age thing. It's do you want a different world, a different life? Do you want to help somebody? Are you tired of killing your life on every other plant around you, every chance you get? Some of us, we are consistently killing every, every, every flower, trying to bud. We bring an end to that. Our way of taking care of it, it's easy work. Satan is proud. He's like, you're excellent at killing. God looks at us, he goes, you are designed for greater things. So if you're serious, follow me. So I'm getting ready to be done with crisis. I'm getting ready to be done with crisis. By familiarizing myself By familiarizing with the knowledge of God. With the knowledge making of God. sure I understand it. Making sure I understand and make sure I apply it. And make sure I apply it. Which is wisdom. Which is wisdom. I will use the way. I will use the way. My life will flourish. My life will flourish. And those around me, and those around me will benefit. Will benefit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus got to be serious and committed to that. Or if not, please don't complain in the crisis. 
Thus God, I don't like knowledge, I don't like understanding, I don't like wisdom, therefore I live perpetually in crisis. It's okay, it's your path. It's a way of ignorance, but each to his own. The only one you have to answer to is God. You will have to tell him why you, why you like so much crisis. Amen? In the name of Jesus. We need to stop living in state of 911 and live in a state of 411. 411 always help people. <laughs> Are you listening? To me? When you call for information, they're always what? Ready. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Yes. 911, you always have an emergency. Can somebody call on you, please? Can somebody get some data? Because you do a little bit of work. Are you listening? The work you have to do is for memorization and dispense and share it with others. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. let's, let's switch that 911 around. In you visit the hurt and saturate it with water. You greatly enrich it. The rivers of God is full of water. You provide them with grain when, amen, you are so prepared to her. So you get no grain until you are prepared. She don't get her flour or greenhouse until she has been what? Prepared. She will, she, she will learn the ways of hybrid after she get knowledge how to take care of basic things first. You can't cross breed before you can get common breed going. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can't get, you cannot know the basics but you want to play all kind of fancy shots. You got to hit the ball first. Does this make sense? You got to know where, where the knowledge is at first. It's with God. You got to understand Jesus. I've made the way clear for you to get to God. You have to go after God and get the knowledge. You got to understand the importance of knowledge or you won't be able to navigate your life or be effective in the world. And then you got to prepare to do it. God said David was a man after his own heart. We need to see why. That boy had some unique skill set. David observed how God does things. He paid close attention to the effectiveness of how God does things. Amen? It reads, who covered the heavens with cloud? Who prepared? So when God wants to rain, what does he do? Prepare the rain. Are you listening to me? You don't just go and be a flower expert. You don't just go and be a mechanic. You don't just go and be, yes, yes, you get into the kingdom just by accepting Jesus, but you can't dispense the kingdom until you're familiar. God sent John the Baptist for the hurt to what? Prepare for the kingdom. If that when Jesus come, who is Jesus? He came to God, the Messiah is coming, the Messiah is coming, get ready, get ready, the Messiah is coming. This was John the Baptist's ministry. Just to announce that what? One is coming to make things right. Imagine I'm going to preach and I don't call none of your attention. I don't going to get ready. I'm about to. But I'll just start talking. Why would you pay any attention? You have to learn, you understand, to prepare yourself. When God wants it to rain, he what? He prepare. When God wants you to go dispense, or to change from 911 to 411, you have to pass you through the process events called what? What's the process event called? Preparation. Let the scripture read. Verse 8. Who covers the heaven with clouds? So when God get it ready, say, okay, I want rain. You ever notice how it gets outside of the heavens? It just gets all dark and the rain, this cloud is gray. This, how do we know it's going to rain? Christ told him, you can look at the heavens and go, it's about to rain. How do we know? Because there's a first of what? A preparation. That's right. When God wants it to rain, he prepared the heavens to allow to release its rain. Mm -hmm. If you want to release your potential, what it is to be made in God's image, what it is to be a God on this earth, you have to be prepared. You have it, but you have to prepare, prepare it. Get it ready. Mm -hmm. The woman had the potential, but she had to learn to harness it. Pull it out. Pull it up. <clears throat> Interest or desire is the first component. Mm -hmm. Commitment is the second. Mm -hmm. Follow three. Follow through is the third. And then application is the fourth. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches us. Oh, Jesus. Is it like a faith cloud? You know, like you, you build it up. You build it up in preparation.
Yes, if, if faith is what you build, it depends on what you're building. It depends. All of it called the faith to a certain degree. If, if lack of faith, a lot of time, why we don't prepare? Is that a, it's two things. Is that a lack of interest or lack of faith? Faith is what allows you to harness it. Interest is what allows you to move into it or towards it or desire it. You can interchange those words. Who prepare rain for the herd? Who makes grass to grow on the mountains? So God said, I got to prepare the clouds, prepare the rain. I got to direct it where? So you have to prepare the clouds and prepare the rain. He did what? Direct it where you want. Focus it. Your goal or your desire or your purpose, focus your power. Amen. For the earth. And as a result, then grass what? Bro. Many of us want things to grow in our life. We want our relationships to work and our marriage and our bodies and our spirit and our finance. But you have to prepare. What you prepare has to be released. And it has to be focused. Then you get what? Result. There's a four-step process there. Can you see the distinction, please? Amen. If you don't understand this, you waste all your time. Or as Dr. Siddiqui said, you'll keep wishing and hoping and wishing and hoping. <laughs> Nothing happens from wishing and hoping. Things happen from practical application. Preparation. You understand? Harness it. Focus it. Results. Hallelujah. My brother there produces a magazine. He does the magic. He doesn't go in his room and go, Kusam, there's a magazine. I heard hours he spent on that computer. I guarantee you, making it, you don't like this one, crack this one down, back and forth, read it. Hours. People see the end result. Nobody see the hours of preparation. You do not get to manifestation or to success without going through the process of preparation. And crisis is what keeps you from preparation. God will only stop your crisis if you are willing to engage into what? Preparation. Man, I always pray to God, oh, stop my crisis, oh, stop my crisis, save my children, save my body, save my soul, save my finance, save my job. You go, I hear you crying out for your crisis, why? I promise you, you will stop it if you go. If you bring an end to this crisis, I will engage in process event to make sure this crisis doesn't come again to dishonor you because you didn't make no crisis. You understand? And what I create will glorify you because the talent I am going to release comes from you and it will bless other people. I promise you, you'll stop your crisis. I guarantee! The reason you don't stop your crisis you just want to get out of your crisis, as Sister Jazz said, to go to another one. Crisis. Come on. Why would it? Come, church. Come on. Let's be my... You know, we love to pretend, you know. We... Are we beginning to understand the importance of preparation? Yes. Amen. You need to understand this. It is very, very important. We have about... Next week is um, family day, a testimony day in, for family. <coughs> and we'll testify. I'm telling you this. You will never have nothing to testify except about your crisis. And that's not testify. It is a test, kind of a testimony. That's it's more a complaining. <laughs> you understand? Because you lack the way. It's not because you're bad. When you find the way, you understand? You will always be testifying. People go, man, we, did you see that crisis? You said, did you see how the way handled it? Hallelujah. You'll be like what Sister Jen talk about going through or so-called attack from the enemy. She, I know I got it, but it didn't affect me. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes. The way will allow you to navigate effectively. You will prepare the cloud. <laughs> Amen? You will spread out the cloud. You will prepare the rain. You will focus the rain. And you will get the result. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? It said he laid out the clouds. Amen? Amen? In the name of Jesus. He covered out the cloud. He prepared the rain. And he sent it where he wants it. Your life after work to see. David, who was after God's own heart. Lord, oh God prepares the cloud and the rain and focus it on artists. David adapt the same attitude from his father as we should. You hear my voice, O oh Lord. So David knew the Lord was going to hear his voice. <coughs> in the morning. Notice what David do. Because he know God is listening. Because he know 
You have to, he has something significant to get done and he wants to do. So David go, God, I know you're hearing my voice. I know you're hearing it in the morning. So look what he do because he noticed. I prepare a what? A prayer. A prayer. Here we go. I'm going to sacrifice some time and some utterance for you because I know you're here. You must pray. You ever see how some of us pray to God? Oh God, it's 9 o'clock. I got to get to work. I have no time to prepare a prayer for you. I don't want to acknowledge that. Prepare a prayer. Mr. Jazzy is somebody important for me. You understand? And I'm going to go see her or she's coming over. You understand? And, and she's significant to me. I will find out what she wants. And I will prepare our favorite one. Meals. My wife calls me all the time. Honey, what do you want to eat? She likes to prepare my favorite what? Foods. You understand? She likes to Yes. Or she'll go, if, you know, if, if, if I have, if she have it our way, she would, she, would, she would buy all my clothes and everything else. Honey, what do you like to wear? You understand? She likes to, pre she prepares. So God told us, God like prayers. He said, I like when you pray. But well, don't you think you need to understand what he wanted to pray for about? So David knew how to prepare a prayer of sacrifice. You have to sacrifice some time getting familiar you know, with what you should pray. Or, in other words, to pray, what are you going to talk about? <coughs> you're going to give God something. What is it you're going to give him? I want to show Sister Jasmine something. What is it I'm going to show her? Are you listening? So David goes in the morning. I know you're going to be listening. God is always listening to see if you prepare a prayer for him. To, do, to prepare a prayer properly, you need to understand a little bit of God. You need to know he, he made everything good, so he likes everything. Good. You need to know he didn't make crisis, he doesn't like crisis. You understand? You need to know his treasures on the earth are what? People. You understand? You need to know how he's doing everything is through what? Jesus Christ. So this is why he said, when you offer up a sacrifice, which is what prayer is, you go, do it in the name of Jesus. If Jazzy don't like meat, I can't serve her meat. I go, Jazzy, I still love you. I know you don't love meat, but I prepare meat for you. She goes, I ain't feeling this love. I'm questioning if you understand what I eat. I'm questioning even if you love me. I'm questioning if you even care. I'm not feeling this thing. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I love this thing called phone. My wife makes it for me all the time. <laughs> Never get fat when her come to me. <laughs> it is true. I gotta, you know, I can I can eat the old tray at one seat and I gotta stop myself. Yeah, like, my point is you have to know a few things to get prepared. When I got a guest coming to me, I said, tell me a little I call somebody, tell me a little bit about my guests, what they like, what they don't like, what do I need to know? God is always ready to listen to you. Morning, middle of day, anytime. The question is, we prepare a prayer. Never prepare your prayer outside of Jesus. So you need to know a little bit about Jesus. One of the things he gives you to communicate to him, he says, prayer. Yeah. What the king requires. Or if that you're giving him gift that he, somebody ever give you a gift you don't want? Or you don't understand why they gave it to you. Yeah. Or you probably never open it or give it away right away or throw it away. Why? It doesn't, it's not relative. It's not relevant to you. If that's something you're interested in. Because they don't know you and that's why they give yes. you. But we have to know Lord, our God, to, to know what he oh, to, oh, to yes. do. Yes. Some of you know me. Most of you know I don't drink. But I'm, but I'm, in, I'm in the industry also where, where there's a lot of wine. There. So I get it all the time. What do I do? I get lots of booze. What do I do with it? Give it away. Man. I give it away. <laughs> Quickly. Very instantly. Oh, you think why? Here you go. It has no significance to me. Why? Amen. Because I'm not interested in that. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but if they give me, you know, no, uh, let's say that someone passed the child. And the only reason he knows this, he has walked with me or my wife or you guys long enough, he knows what I like. When he buys me things, I, or my wife, I'll never give it to her, Sister Jinger. Why? They buy me things that they know I like. If they know I like it, they don't waste their money. They kind of know what I'll do with it. I don't keep things around. I said, when you pray to me, I want you to prepare a prayer. I'm always, listen, once you accept Jesus, even before you accept Jesus, when you're in your crisis and you go, help me. And if you help me to get out of here and help me not to go back, I will help somebody or glorify or be very good as you made me. you send Jesus. Are you listening to what I'm saying? He will, he's always listening. 
But the, the challenge we have with it, he can read our heart, as Sister Jack said. He knows when you're going, save me from my crisis, but in your heart you can't wait to get back. Mm-hmm. You're like, man, I messed up with our guests. But next week I'm going to try with the next one. He goes, no, 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 I don't want you to try with anybody. I want you to learn some things, mm-hmm. not try. Until you got that kind of change, like you're kind of afraid of yourself. I'm going, I ain't going to try. I ain't going to get familiar. You, you can't really operate with him. Mm-hmm. Amen? So, David knew the Lord was listening to him. The Lord will hear his voice. So he said, I prepare a prayer, a sacrifice for you. Do you prepare for the Lord? My prayer always set beforehand. Sometimes, you know, there's something called the rhema prayer. The Holy Spirit is praying through me. But when I'm, you see, a lot of my prayer operate in thanksgiving or specific. It's, It's a specific task. And I, you see, I'm just going to remind him what's supposed to happen based on what he said. Mm-hmm. You see, but most of my prayer that I've prepared for him, you know, uh, pre- preparation is, is like, is that like what we call it? We're going to dig him up. It's what, preparation mm-hmm. is like worship. Worship is songs made about God, victories, and everything he has done, and we're going to worship him about it. You understand? Know that's what it's called worship. It's like idolize. I'm gonna, you know, you're so good. You made the heavens and you made the earth and you made human and you made them in your, your, your own image and you made the earth good, but you made human very good and you save human by your Messiah, Jesus, and you fill them with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Spirit takes everything from you and give it to us and lead us in. This is worship. I am telling him about all the things he do, mm-hmm. all the things that makes him what? Awesome. Mm-hmm. Mighty. Mighty. Mm-hmm. Yes, so when I prepare a praise, you see, and eventually you get good at recognizing, I might watch him operating in a life, and then I see, or I might pass, and I saw a crisis, and then I saw the Lord touch the crisis, and then I recognize it right away, and I'm, a, I'm about to offer this in a sacrifice of praise. I notice through your Messiah, you saved that person from the crisis, and you have sent them in the prepare, your know, process event, and you're moving them you know, into the bountifulness of the righteous color, and I offer up a sacrifice. It's called recognize and I and praise. praise. I recognize. Hallelujah. I hope when you come to church, you're trying to Lord to <clears throat> prepare a prayer. You're trying to Lord not to set up clouds and rain and focus it to get what you're after. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sorry. This is the truth I'm going to tell some of you. Most of what most people pray for, they'll never get from God. It is not a prepared prayer. A prepared prayer is simply this. It's an aligned prayer. It's in alignment with Imagine going for a job. What do you do when you go for a job? What do you prepare? You, what's the first thing you prepare? Your resume. What does that mean? What does it mean to prepare your resume? Focus it towards what? The job you're going what? Come on, people, it's in magic. Do you go in for a job and you don't harness your skills to show the comparison or the similarity? Why you will be good? And then be, after you set up your resume, then who do you prepare? You for what? Do you go there not having a clue what you're going to talk about? Don't know nothing about the company. Don't know nothing about the job. I've come. For what? Don't know. Prepares you. Yeah. Prayer is no different. Prayer is a resume. <laughs> you need to know a couple of things. This couple of structures, well to set up. You have a paragraph and so forth, capital, periods, commas. Mm. Prayer is the same thing. The, the major aspect of the preparation of the prayer is Jesus. And why he is, he's the one that did all the work. In the beginning, he was God intent, and everything was created by him, so you gotta give him, and I said, God like, like, he like, he like people or things get his due praise. Mm-hmm. So you can give Jesus his due what? Praise. Mm-hmm. He redeemed everything, give it to him. Mm-hmm. He poured out his spirit, give it to him. Mm-hmm. He is bringing all of us to glory, give it to him. He said, the work that deserves his faith. Jesus doing the work. Let him, do, let him get his praise. So one of the most important components in setting up your prayers like David is to make sure Jesus, you understand? It's all over Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, paragraph one. Jesus, 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 paragraph two. Jesus, 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 in the closing. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Set up the prayers. If you can't pray properly, minimum, just go, Lord, I thank you for Jesus. 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 That's a good prayer. You're in alignment. Well, maybe you can pray a little bit better, but that, that'll work, trust me. Start there. That's a good prayer. That's a good prayer. These are the ones that doesn't work. Lord, can I get a house? Can I get a car? 
Can I get myself in more crisis? I cannot manage my one credit card. But if you give me a house, that'll be awesome. And if you give me a car, I cannot manage my phone. But if you give me a big business, that's not this plan. It's how we pray. Now God is a God of righteousness. Imagine Sister Jazz is my mom. I can't take care of this. And I'm going, Mom, can I have a computer? Can I have a chair? Can I have a car? Can I have a girlfriend? And she no, I can't take care. Now I said she's a very righteous and integral woman. She does things fair. If she gives me all those things, knowing I can't take care of that, what does that make her? Cool. You know, it, yes, make her wicked. She has snared her integrity. She has laid a burden upon me that I can't what? Carry. And worse, she know I can't handle it. And she know what it takes to carry what I'm asking for. That would make her wicked. God will never do that. You don't get what you're asking for because you're asking him to kill you. He cannot do that. He can't kill that which is very good and significant to him. So he don't give it to you. He goes, no, 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 no. We need to start baby steps. We need to stop you living in crisis. Don't, don't forget about anything yet. We need to get you in process, event. I'll say it different. We need to develop you. We need to get you trained. We need to get you compatible. We need to make you capable. You understand? We, we need to get these basic abilities up first. You see? We need to make sure, as my sister said, you don't fall back. And then I will bless you in Jesus' name. To him, therefore, let us constantly and at all times offer up God a sacrifice of praise. Amen? Which is the fruits of our lips. He said, if we're going to come from your lips. Amen? amen? That thankful acknowledge, amen, and confession and glorify his name. She so said, I want you to glorify and magnify Jesus. If you read above, they're talking about Jesus and what he has done. Amen? If you read like verse 12 and so forth, you don't have time for that. He said, therefore, Jesus also suffered, etc. They go, I want you to glorify Jesus, he said. He said, the sacrifice of praise I want you to offer is Jesus. Amen. So when you set up a prayer, you have to set it up in what? Jesus. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And when you set up your life, you have to set it up in alignment with Jesus. And when you set up whatsoever you're going to do, some of you are going to build ministry. Some of you are going to build orphanage. Some of you are going to build hospital, school. Set it up in the name, amen, and the foundation of Jesus. And I promise you, you will succeed. You'll get the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding. So David understood this. So David thought, God, I know you're listening to me. It's morning. I, I know you always hear me. So I'm about to prepare a prayer, a sacrifice for you. Amen? And watch and wait for you to speak to my heart. So David just doesn't know, prepare the prayer, that he's waiting for God to what? Speak my heart, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit. A message of what? Message of love, if he don't talk back to you, you don't want to keep doing it. God always wants to talk back to you. But here's the question. Have you set up the prayer properly? Our heart is our cell phone of the spirit realms. So, so especially if it's for God. So, after you, you, you utter to God a sacrifice of praise, you should then focus on your heart, waiting for God to, 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 to speak to your heart, you know, a message of love to encourage you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Are you at that Hallelujah. I can barely sit in my seat. <laughs> Woman, you're moving. Process event, I call it. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You've got to prepare the prayer properly. You have to know, well, let's say, I don't care if it's for your life or somebody else. God wants everything good. God wants Jesus to be glorified. God wants you to help the poor. God wants you to move in his knowledge. God wants you to move in his understanding. God wants you, so you need to pray like, there's so much prayer I can think of this year, but let's give you a quick, a couple, quick one. That's like two or three. You need to say, God, I thank you for your knowledge. Your knowledge allowed me to live in the way you intended me to live. I thank you for your understanding, for understanding your knowledge. I thank you for your wisdom. I thank you for Jesus that made me. I thank you for Jesus that redeemed me. I thank you for Jesus that filled me and give me every good thing to do your will. I thank you for let me see the destiny to which you create me. I thank you to let me live in your nature of love. This is prepare prayer. 
Or there's a situation, and you go, Lord, I see that situation. I would love to help, but I don't know how. Give me the knowledge of the situation. Release the grace that is founded in Jesus, that I can do something about that situation to glorify you. Lord, I know you're listening to me. And right now, I'm about to go to my heart and wait for you to speak, Lord, speak, Lord. <laughs> That's prayer. This other one is trying to buy booze of God. God, I need a car. God, I need Alexa. God, I need that girl. Even though I don't know how to take care of her. God, I need a business. Even though I don't know nothing about business. That is not prayers. You're out of alignment, first of all, with the preparation process. That's like you went, I, I want rain, but there's no cloud. And I have no place to put the rain. There's no ground, no lake, no nothing. But let it rain. So you just want to flood yourself and everybody. Let's help you in this church in one thing, how to pray. I'm going to do everything through the Spirit of God to help you to pray, to prepare a prayer. If I could just help you to prepare a prayer. Grant us the grace to prepare appropriate prayers. Help us to pray. Help us, Holy Spirit. I now ask you in the name of Jesus to release all of the knowledge, understanding, and wisdom so that we can prepare for prayer. As Brother David prepared for prayer, and as the Lord prepared a cloud and the rain and sent it down to the earth and bring forth vegetation, so Lord, Help us to prepare a prayer. You ask us to pray. You ask us in Hebrew 2, <coughs> verse 15, to let the prayer be offered up as a sacrifice in the name of Jesus, glorified and magnified. Help us to understand these things we talk about today. Help us to be like the flower lady. The devil was trying to tell her she's dead, she's over, she's finished, but she was just beginning. Amen. Help us to release the glory. Amen.